It was time. The troops of the absolute evil had driven the Alliance back to their capital, King's Ending. The time for the final battle had arrived. Prepare to destroy the Alliance, and with it, all good in the land once and for all. Once upon a time, there was a kingdom full of flowers and rainbows, where the sun shone all the time, and there was loads of that goody-goody, lovey-dovey, good people stuff going on. There, the alliance of abominably good people lived in unearned wealth and prosperity. But there was a path leading to a different place there. At the end of this path was a rock. There was a cave carved in this rock in which the absolute evil lived. It wasn't a grubby, damp cave smelling of muck and mildew, but a deep, dark dungeon, so dark that even darkness itself was afraid of it. It was home to numerous innocent monsters who enjoyed a happy, contented existence, living in complete harmony with their environment. But time and again, the sickening, sweet-smelling good visited this underworld in search of treasure and experience points. Many monsters found this to be the death of them, but much worse, the absolute evil's treasures were being stolen. One day, just as a few more heroes had finished plundering its dungeon, the absolute evil decided it had had enough and decided to do something new, something quite monstrous. Go to the surface. The Alliance tried to resist, but the approaching horde just flowed over them like an angry wave of axes, teeth and bad breath. After numerous unrelenting battles, the absolute evil finally stood before the Alliance's capital. King's Ending. After countless battles, the forces of the absolute evil reached the Alliance capital, King's Landing. The lovable remnants of the forces of good had come here to make ready for the final battle. Evil would pay a high price indeed to storm those fortress worlds, or so they thought. <laughs> Suddenly, a rumble rose from deep within the earth. Stones burst asunder, revealing an ancient path into the depths. Out of the depth of Stygian darkness arises the invincible evil. With earth-shaking steps, the unstoppable evil began its trek towards the front. In the terribly improbable event that it may have forgotten how that works, a formidable health function has been provided. Forest could not withstand the aura of the ultimate evil and beat a hasty retreat. A few of the Alliance units had entrenched themselves here. A determined absolute evil marched towards them in order to strike them down with its mighty weapon. The absolute evil had discovered a medal. These legendary awards ensured a creature could be made even more powerful. Eyes ablaze with greed, the insidious evil gazed upon the blood-drenched battlefield. Here, the last defenders of good would die, and an age of evil Projectiles from the Alliance's catapults darkened the sky. But the Horde fighting skills were at their best in darkness, if they survived. Absolute Evil strode like a war god through the defender's ranks and smote them with ease to the ground. Absolute 
evil destroyed the defenders' camp in the west with the greatest of ease. Now, only one tiny camp offers any resistance to the absurdly evil evil. And even that won't be able to hold out for much longer. destroy the defenders' camp in the east with the greatest of ease. The defenders in front of the city had been beaten to a pulp and defeated. Now the time had come to attack King's Ending, the final battle beckoned. The city gate was firmly barricaded by the Alliance's archers, but the absolute evil would not allow itself to be held up by such a ridiculous impediment. So, go get them! Destroy them now! Ha 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 ha! Oh yes, sorry. Stay in character. <clears throat> the absolute evil used its all-powerful magic to eliminate the archers and open the gate to the city. Using its legend, wait for it, Derry powers, the absolute evil destroyed the impediment with ease and simultaneously eliminated a whole group of defenders. The road to the capital was now clear. The absolute evil did not hesitate for even one nanosecond. The insidious evil entered King's Ending. A small, pitiful group of defenders stood in its way. Suddenly, the doors of several houses in the city opened, and with a loud roar, defenders bore down on the rather surprised An ambush. The invincible evil had crushed the defenders. King's ending had been defeated. At least, that's what it thought. Suddenly, the final heroes of the Alliance emerged from nowhere. Another ambush? Now, this was becoming very boring. But wait, this time it was different. Instead, the heroes raised their hands and started singing an incomprehensible chant. A magical ritual? This did not go well. Well, actually, it built the arrival of good things, great things, unless you happen to be the Earth's team. Somewhere in the depths of the dungeon, the ultimate evil awoke. The last remaining heroes of the country joined forces and cast a powerful banishment spell. The absolute evil disappeared from sight with a threatening gesture, and a faint whispered, I'll be back, could be heard coming from its lips. The absolute evil had been banished, and its essence shattered into several pieces. Its reign of terror had ended. The good people of the overworld rejoiced, and an era of peace began for the Alliance. The evil creatures were driven back into the underground, doomed to serve as cannon fodder for pleasure-seeking adventurers. Meanwhile, secreted away in the world's most inaccessible places, the last remains of the absolute evil were resting, never again to see the light of the overworld. Until today, that is. Somewhere deep under the earth, the ultimate evil awoke. And the hand of terror arose controlled by the ultimate evil. Come on, Hand of Terror! Arise, damn you! Methinks that exploring the surrounding area would be a sensible strategy. However, to do this, 
bite would be required. Hmm, still not bright enough. An old throne room was revealed by the light. The circumstances remained a mystery. The Hand of Terror flew through the throne room, following each and every thought the ultimate evil had. After a few flying sessions, the ultimate evil was able to control the Hand with ease. The time had come to call forth creatures who were completely devoted to it and would dirty work. Little snots were the dregs of each and every dungeon and spent their time taking care of it. The expansion mad evil hired one snot on the spot. After very careful consideration, the ultimate evil now decided to recruit a little snot. The first little snot appeared. It was completely ready to work in the dungeon and to crawl in the dust before the ultimate evil. Little snots were important to the ultimate evil because they took care of many important little things, such as excavating new areas. The psionically gifted evil could sense the presence of something important that was buried to the south. It instructed its little snots to dig in that direction. As quick as a fart, the little snot made his way to the marked position and began to dig. Behold! The creatures of the overjoyed evil had apparently been much more industrious than it had thought. A great dungeon was revealed behind the wall. Everything was already in place. Doors, traps, a well-filled treasury. Oh wait, treasury? And where, if you please, is this treasury? Oh, oh well. One can't expect too much of these mindless little snots. First of all, some gold had to be dug out to make space for a treasury to be created. The Hand of Terror swiftly marked a few small gold veins so that the little snots could excavate them. As soon as the gold vein was selected, a little snot immediately set out to mine valuable gold for the greedy evil. Once most of the gold had been mined, the Hand of Terror quickly created a treasury on the spot so that the precious metal could be safely stored. Clever Evil mastered this task with flying colors. From now on, Little Snots could use the treasury to store mined gold. It was then at the Greedy Evil's disposal whenever more rooms needed to be built or new creatures recruited. Little Snots were all well and good, but were too weak and cowardly to defend the dungeon. Since it was not able to defend itself, the Ultimate Evil would have to hire some orcs. But they would require food. Liquid food. Well, beer to be precise. So the next important thing to build was a brewery, and that would require some space to be created. 
the ultimate evil had the feeling that its servants were not really putting their backs into the work. Might a hearty slap from the hand of terror change that? The sadistic evil encouraged its creature to work a little faster, with a friendly but not at all gentle slap. area cleared for the brewery site and with quick finger snaps from the hand of terror the room stood ready excellent but the recently built brewery lacked a brewing copper with a sigh of resignation the overworked evil set about taking care of that too Hard-working evil effortlessly built a brewing copper so that delicious beer could be brewed as soon as possible. One of the little snots started working on the brewing copper. The nostalgic evil banished all thoughts of Oktoberfest and brass bands. Those would have to wait. More important tasks had to be completed first. Both beer and gold were now available in the dungeon. So it was time to hire some creatures to defend against greedy heroes or whatever else snuck around underground. At present, it was only simple orcs declaring undying loyalty to the ultimate evil. The rest of the war was scattered to the winds. Orcs were defensive close combat specialists, capable of dealing with many opponents. However, they were very vulnerable to ranged attacks. Payday! An eerie gong rang through the hall. It did not bode well for the ultimate evil's treasury stocks, for at each sounding of the gong, the creatures would collect their undeserved wages. However, there was little it could do about this, as it was chained to the throne. Thus, it had to give free reign to its servants' desires. For the time being, at least. <laughs>
One of the repellent evil servants became very thirsty. This was typical of a troop member of the unanonymous alcoholics known as the Horde. Dipso made his way to the nearest brewery to quench his thirst. A thirsty orc arrived at the brewery. Eager and slavering, he started demolishing the alcohol hoarding evil's stock of beer. One louse-infested orc crawled up from the depths and declared allegiance to the ultimate evil. The first step towards the creation of a powerful army had been taken. The dungeon of the expansion mad evil grew and prospered, but unfortunately it had reached the maximum possible population. Nation it could currently manage. Now a creature would have to be thrown into the bottomless pit before any others could be brought in. The profound evil had had enough of dungeon sightseeing and now wanted to move to the surface to try a dish that is best served cold. Revenge. Some Alliance members were bound to be guarding the entrance to the overworld. A fine appetizer for a lengthy meal. The creature disappeared into the pit of uselessness with a long, drawn, and gradually diminishing. This particular act of wickedness brought a smile to the face of the ultimate evil. Nameless evil's creatures came upon a spider's nest during their search for an entrance to the overworld. It would take more than one orc to smoke that out. The abysmal evil used the Hand of Terror to grab several of the creatures that were still completely inexperienced at fighting and threw them onto the spider's nest. The little snots found a healing potion in a hidden room. This was able to restore one of the ultimate evil's creatures to full health. The spiders dropped like flies. The strategically well-versed evil patted itself on the back, proud that it had led its troops into battle with such aplomb. And by led, I just simply mean chucking them at the enemy. The basics of a dungeon were now in place. However, the brewery was tiny and didn't really have room to store beer barrels in, and the treasury was also anything but impressive in size. Quickly, the expansion-hungry evil set out to enlarge its dungeon. <laughs> The evil has awoken, but its brothers are still asleep. Huh? What on earth was that? That's not in my script. No matter. We'd better get back to concentrating on the dungeon.
It's payday. The little snots came across a small room containing a healing potion whilst pointlessly digging around in the underground. The ultimate evil could throw one of its wounded creatures on the potion to heal. monstrosity loomed out of the darkness on six, no, eight legs. This dungeon's human guards had been ancient history for a long while. Now it was home to a huge spider and her brood. Would Sam and Frodo escape it and continue their journey to Mount Doom, or was this the end of the ring bearer? Hang on a minute, that's not the right text. Where were we? Oh yes, a huge spider, henceforth called the Spider Queen. It would be necessary to eliminate the Spider Queen before the Horde could reach the surface. The Spider Queen sent forth a wave of her children. Of course, the ultimate evil was fully aware of this danger and immediately prepared to defend itself against them. The vile perversion, once called the Spider Queen, had nothing more with which she could fight the Horde. Later, the sensitive evil would have her innards made into a lava lamp. The way to the surface was open. Now it was time to put those vengeance plans into practice. The vile evil wanted to take this opportunity to utter a really sinister laugh. But unfortunately, its physical state made this unviable. Instead, it asked the narrator to do a bit of sinister laughter on its behalf. Oh well, here goes. Deep breath. <laughs> 